job here, just finished, so I can turn this out. Sorry, that little out there. Oil cooler was leaking from the seals, so we replaced the oil cooler seals. Now we're just running it up, bleeding it, making sure there's no leaks. Take it for a road test. Now all we're doing, running the vehicle up to temperature while well, looking at the live data, making sure that the fan kicks in at the correct temperature. And that's what we do after we do uh, bleed or a coolant change. We have to make sure that the thermostat opens and that the uh, fans kick in. Job now, so I'm replacing the brake booster. It's leaking, uh, not holding pressure. So I've diagnosed this, I'll be removing it. So I'm just gonna remove, uh, take this out of the way, disconnect there, disconnect these things here, move this bracket out of the way and get a bit more access. Got that bracket out of the way, this is there. I'm gonna remove these four 13 holding bolts, remove them, and then we'll start under the bonnet removing all the master cylinder. Now we're gonna remove the master cylinder, get this battery out of the way, and then we can take it out. Move the battery and the battery tray out of the way, remove a few pipes, as you can see, that's it there. So I just have to remove the brake master cylinder, this component here. So I'll just disconnect it and then this will come off as a whole unit. So there, put the new one in. Just going to fit the master cylinder, bleed it. The bleed of the system now, we've got our brake pressure bleeder connected. And we're just starting from the furthest away from the reservoir. Furthest away and then we'll move on to the closest, making sure there's no air in the system. Nice and full. So what we're going to do is uh, put it back together. Do a vacuum test and then we'll take it from there. Here, just notice that there's a recall and we have to update the uh, electric. Uh, we have to update actually, we have to update the onboard charger, direct voltage converter with the latest software. So that's this module here. So we'll be updating that module with the latest software as per the report instruction. Next car we have is a Grandland. No start, no crank. So we're just going to scan it, see what we have. Full scan, see what faults come up on the whole system. See what we get. Oh, didn't read the VIN. Vehicle DTC scan. Let's see what it comes up with. We're going to have to put a battery charge on it because it's really 9.9 volts, so we'll put a booster on there. Oh, we've got no common with the engine control module. If we go to details, we've lost communication with our ECM, so we'll create the report. Our uh, work CAN bus tool, I use it very quickly just to see the communication. And we've got the little message CAN bus plus shorted. And then when we look at the live data, Oh, there's a gun. As you can see, there's nothing there showing both of them 0.8.8 .8 .8, and we've got no diagnostic database data. My blue trace connected to CAN high and my red trace connected to CAN low. So my CAN low is doing something. When I've got it on the auto setting, if I set it to a 20 volt spikes up there, let's see if we set a trigger. Uh, not auto, auto trigger. Let's see if we see anything. Maybe if we put our time scales longer. Let's remove the trigger. No, nothing there for now. Okay. I'm gonna take a photo of this. Got our markers in place. As you can see, the blue trace. Can high reading 236 millivolts, red trace can low reading 15 millivolts. So we're gonna next step, we're gonna check the possibly the power and grounds to the ECU and see what they're reading. See if we've got good power, good ground. Pico 7 test and measurement one. As you can see, we do have some sort of uh, voltage present or communication present on the can low by them spikes. But we're gonna do some more of testing, we'll see how it goes diagram up for well, this is a LES 03S engine so all we're gonna do is check our fuses check our relays 
and if they're good then we'll check the power the ignitions to the ECU and we'll also check the two grounds that we have here for the ECU so we're going to do them checks first so we've got these four fuses to check there's three here but we're going to check because these are in row we're going to check all three of them we're going to check that fuse there and these are the power supply to the uh, ECM so we're going to use our test site here, trying to match it up, trying to see where it goes there, so it must go that way to go to my cable, there's my relays, so it's going to be one there, and these three here, just going to test them with a test, so we're doing our checks, test our test light, test how it works, OTC test light, just going to do a fuse, see that test light is lighting up, so very hard, I've never done this before like this, so it's going to take getting used to. So this is one of them. And I'm definitely on there. Nothing. 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 No. 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 Yes, test light is working, see? Test light lights up, so we'll have to see where these get their power from. 